we know how the movie typically ends. It ends with everyone blaming the capitalists and uh, turning to an authoritarian leader like Hitler. We want to change the ending. We want them to blame the central planners and return to capitalism because this is not a capitalist society anymore. Please join us for our next live stream Sunday, June 26th at 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll go over current events, past guests, and of course, gold and silver news. Once again, our next live stream will be Sunday, June 26th, 9 p.m. Eastern. See you then. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Chris Galizio, executive producer of Money Game, joins us today. Chris is an experienced institutional portfolio manager with a long track record of success in managing large cap growth portfolios. He is an expert in capital markets, portfolio management, mutual funds, hedge funds, and investments. Holding an MBA focused in finance from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, Chris has taken those skills into the movie-making genre to get the word out about the money game being played. We're delighted to have Chris Galizio here today as a first-time guest. It's time to saddle up and silver up for Chris Galizio. Chris, welcome to SBTV. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm out in Boston. It's a beautiful day here today. All right. Glad to have you on board. And I'm excited about this venture you're in called The Money Game. Can you share with us your background and how you came to producing the movie The Money Game? 100%. So I started my career in emerging markets, which to me is one of the most interesting places um, to start um, an investing career because you see cycles so quickly. You're looking at 30 different emerging markets. um, So you actually have a lot. There's so much to learn from that. I eventually shifted, um, ran um, growth fund at Pioneer Investments. Then I got a great offer from Fidelity um, and and took it. And it grew a fund at Fidelity from, it was a large cap growth fund, um, institutional investors, from 20 million to 7 billion. Um, after leaving Fidelity, I started a hedge fund um, called Focus Capital. And I started to notice things that don't make sense anymore in the world. Um, as the Fed controls rates, the entire system started to break. Um, so I wrote a white paper called the $340 trillion problem that you can find on my website, um, focused-capital.com. Um, and I basically trying to explain what was happening in, in markets. Um, and I realized it was more important to explain it to the average American. And so rather than doing it in a white paper that no one's going to read, um, I decided to make a movie. Um, and so I, um, so I met a director, um, and we, he thought the website was fantastic, and he thought it was a great idea. Um, and we decided, okay, let's go ahead and do this. So we hired a screenwriter um, who can bring it down to the average American, who can explain it, to explain everything that you're seeing today in markets. Um, the opening quote in the movie, um, the task is not to see what no one else sees, but to think what no one else has thought about that which everybody sees. Because we're seeing complete craziness in markets. Because in my opinion, the Fed broke capitalism. So we have the biggest topic in the planet. When you remove risk from a system, you change the ecosystem. Think about if you remove the, the, the lions from the savanna, the gazelle population, passive investors would explode. But then they'd be competing for scarce water resources and die off. And the system would change. So, so, so by controlling rates, you break the ecosystem and you're seeing it today in every, in everyday world, um, because as they controlled risk, now there's, there's shortages of everything, the shortage of oil, gas, food, um, airplane pilots, take your pick. Um, and what people don't realize is it's, we're sitting in a sovereign debt crisis. And I understand that from, uh, from watching emerging markets through the days. I, I sat through the, um, the Asian contagion in the 1990s. We had the tequila effect in, um, in, um, in Latin America. So I've seen these things play out before, but you've never seen it happen in a developed market. And so what Money Game is, is an attempt to do is timestamp the biggest transition um, um, in financial markets history away from the dollar as the reserve, global reserve currency. And so that's kind of the background. We don't discuss that type of stuff in the movie because we're trying to show it to the average American rather than talk about it. And so it's, it's, um, it, we think that we talk about the movie <clears throat> as goodwill hunting, um, meets the wolf of wall street because we're showing, we're showing two different economies. We're showing the financial economy and the real economy. The real economy is our main character. Um, and so, um, so we, we, we're trying to use, um, the, the metaphor of the big five from Africa. Um, if you remove lions from the ecosystem, you change the ecosystem. 
Um, so, um, so you'll see throughout the movie, um, different things like, um, like the cheetah, well, you'll see, um, you'll see cheetah coin. Um, you'll see, um, the, a, an advertisement for, um, trying to save the rhinos, um, which is a, an, a, a gold coin. And it's going to say, um, never going to be a dinosaur, right? So you're going to see the big, so you're going to see algorithms in there, which are wildebeest. Uh, you'll see, uh, the lions, which are active managers. The one thing you're not going to see in, in the movie is, um, is the elephant, uh, because it's the elephant in the room and it's the real economy. Um, and it's our main character. Right. Um, so, um, so, um, so we don't actually, we'll never talk about the, 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 the elephant. Um, but you're, but as, as, as the fed controls rates, it breaks the ecosystem. And the thing people don't realize is it also slows the real economy. So what we're doing today is we're pouring money into things that don't make sense. GameStop, we all know it's a bankrupt company. Um, AMC, nobody, nobody's even going to movies anymore. Um, you know, um, during COVID, we have this in the movie. Um, during COVID, um, Live Nation, which is live concert events, doubled from its peak, but nobody was at theaters. How does that make sense? And so we're seeing, th- no, not theaters, no, nobody was at um, live events, I mean, because they closed all the night live events. Um, we're seeing Dogecoin. So you're seeing all these craziness in markets, um, and nothing makes sense anymore. And it, it's because the system, once the Fed intervened in markets, it broke the ecosystem. The stock market was no longer an investing system. It's a financing vehicle, right? So, and that's a big step. Um, once they once they intervened, um, it became a financing vehicle. And if you think about that, Tesla a, was a trillion dollar company. If they sell 10% of their shares, which they do all the time, um, they have $100 billion. And if I handed any anyone $100 billion, they can make a car company, right? So it's not an investment. You're not, you're not, you shouldn't expect your money back. Um, you should expect, um, you know, you're just financing them. So which disconnects stocks from fundamentals. But when you disconnect stock from fundamentals, so now you have two different economies. You have the financial economy and the real economy that no longer work together. In his, in, if historically, those two things should work together to efficiently allocate uh, scarce resources. But once they intervened, it broke the system. You know, Chris, I've heard you say in uh, other interviews that you want the movie to timestamp, timestamp an important period in history that has never happened before. Can you share with us what this period in history is, which kind of talking about and we're all getting a taste of and why it fascinates you so much. So I think we're, we're experiencing a currency transition. Um, I think we're, we're, we're the, the, the world is shifting away from um, the dollar as the global reserve currency. Um, if that happens, um, the, the biggest export in the, in the U S over the last 40 years has been dollars, right? Um, that's one thing people don't understand. Um, it's not as, as we export dollars, we lose um, manufacturing at home, right? So we, we, we've shipped all of our manufacturing to China or externally. Um, and if you think about that, all that, um, those exports externally, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're producing everything overseas, it's a deflationary effect. What happens if we have to reshore everything back to the U.S.? It's going to cause more inflation. So I think you're, what you're doing is you're seeing, you're seeing, a, um, you're seeing the Fed – during COVID, Fed um, increased money supply by six trillion dollars. But again, it wasn't just the Fed; it was also Europe, it was also Japan, it was also the UK. Right? When people look at the DXY, um, the DXY is the dollar system. Those those six currencies are all working together. So it's really a non. It, it's so you shouldn't really compare. Um, if, if you're looking for for declines in the dollar, you should be looking at things like gold or. Um, or, um, or, or commodities or oil or energy, w- whatever you want to look at, but you should be comparing it versus commodities. By the way, commodities are at 120 year low versus financial assets, right? So, so what, you, what you saw over this period was a wealth effect, and this is in the movie. Um, as interest rates fall, asset prices rise, right? Everyone knows that. Has anyone thought about what happens when interest rates go negative like they are today? When interest rates go negative, all assets are worth infinite. In the movie, we, we would describe it like this. My coffee is worth infinite. My desk is worth infinite. My chalkboard is worth infinite. Does that make sense? And of course, that doesn't make sense, right? Um, because they're, they're playing with the price of money, which is the most important statistic in finance, right? So when, you, when, you, when, when everything's worth infinite, I can't distinguish between the value of my, my cell phone uh, with this tap it uh, logo or my coffee because um, it's all worth infinite. Right. So the entire system starts to misallocate resources. So then the professor in the movie turns the, the, the chalkboard and says, um, 
um, and, and comes up with the theme of the movie, here's the problem. Capitalism requires risk, interest rates, to allocate scarce resources. When you remove risk from an ecosystem, you change the ecosystem. Now, notice how much the ecosystem of capitalism has changed. Um, um, right now, 60% of the market is passive and 25% is quant. It's all computers now. It's algorithms. It's when people say, well, people are think people are buying GameStop. It's not people anymore. It's algorithms, right? It's the Fed intervening. And by the way, they have these, these 10 factors as a portfolio manager of Fidelity. I know that everyone talks about the factors now, um, you know, the, the 10 factors of, um, of quants. The Fed just controlling the system through factors. So if you notice what happened when, um, when, when COVID hit, um, the companies that lost money the most, the companies that needed financing went up the most. Peloton, uh, Boeing, uh, take your pick Square, all the tech companies that need financing. The companies that print shares like like crazy went up the most because it's the Fed, right? It's by by the way, Hertz went bankrupt um, during COVID, um, and all of a sudden the stock was up five hundred percent. And everyone's saying, "Well, why is why is Hertz going up five hundred percent when they've already declared bankruptcy?" Um, it was because the Fed was pump, pr printing money. It wasn't because people were buying buying Hertz because they saw, "Oh my God, it's bankrupt. I should go buy some." Um, so so the system has shifted. Since 2008, the system has shifted from um, from an investing system. When I because I've been in this business for a long time, it was always investing. Once 2008 hit and they started um, um, intervening in markets, all of a sudden it became a financing system. And now it's much more clear that it's a financing system. I mean, <clears throat> and and you're also seeing how things don't make sense. I mean, I looked at today. Um, U.S. Steel trades at one times earnings, one times trailing free cash flow, right? They just came out with earnings that were fantastic today. Um, why is that trading at one times earnings and you're paying 15 times revenue? For, or take a look at Boeing. Boeing cash flow from operations, forget about CapEx, um, just cash flow from operations. I think they lost $3.2 billion over the, last, um, over the last four quarters in cash flow from operations. Um, and their stock trades at, uh, I don't know what it is, 60, 80 billion, whatever it is. How about Amazon? Amazon, um, in free cash flow terms, lost $39 billion over the last four quarters uh, because their CapEx was high, but they grew at 7%. It's not like they're growing anymore, right? So why is this trading at $1.1 trillion? So, you've got two, so, so what they're doing is they're controlling interest rate. When interest rates go negative, all assets are worth infinite. Um, and, but, 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 um, but, we're all, but, the, but as, the, as the, um, the DXY gets stronger, um, it sends a message to the quants that they should be selling uh, basic materials. Right, and so you see, basic materials have never been cheaper, and we're trading at a 120-year low. Commodity stocks, them, I'm sorry, commodity prices themselves are at a 120-year low, and you can buy those stocks at one to six times free cash flow. I mean, I, I look around the world, and by the way, none of it makes sense. I mean, there's a there's a there's a company, there's one of the, the biggest um, um, oil company in, in Argentina is YPF, trades at one times trailing free cash flow during an energy surge. None of this makes sense. How about, how about Petrobras trading at a 32% dividend yield, 2.2 um, times free cash flow? So it's clear to me that the system um, is misallocating resources. By the way, if you're those companies, rather than produce more oil during an energy shortage, you're going to buy back shares, which is going to make the energy shortage bigger. Right. So with the, so by, by controlling... By, by intervening in markets, they broke the entire ecosystem. It's no longer millions of independent thinkers um, setting prices. It's um, quants and passive. And like you said, it's like a bunch of gazelles walking through the middle of the street, um, never getting eaten. They don't fear anything. So nobody, and, and because, and so that's the other thing, reason I wanted to make the movie. I want people to start thinking again. Um, imagine if you in, reintroduced a bunch of um, a bunch of lions back into the savannah. Um, they, they would make a killing, right? And so all we need to do, all you need to do is, so if you shift your lens from markets are efficient to markets have never been more inefficient than they are today, all of a sudden everything becomes clear. Because everyone's looking and saying, well, the, the, why, is, um, why is um US Steel trading at one time's earnings? It must be because their earnings are about to decline. Well, they just produced earnings that are off the charts and beat expectations and bought back 7% of their company in a quarter. So I don't think the management teams believes they're going to be um, they're going to be um, declining like that. So if you just think, if people think again, we can actually take back our system. Um, but um, and that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a bunch of lions out there and and just make a killing.
we're, we're trying. So <clears throat> the other thing is the system has shifted from um, capitalism to central planning, right? Because the feds are controlling interest rates. So now we don't, we don't live in, this is not a capitalist society. So in the movie, we have, um, we, we're, we're going to, we have um, our, our main character who represents the real economy. And then we have, um, we have uh, Bryson Hills, the CEO of the next big thing. He's making hundreds of million dollars on his app, um, but his app isn't profitable, right? So, um, so we'll see how that goes. But, um, but you're seeing that in the real world. We kind of modeled um, the, the next big thing is Snapchat, which was fortuitous for us um, because you see what's going on with Snapchat. Now it's down 90%, right? Um, so, um, so, so that, that's, that's what we're working. So the other thing I wanted to do, <clears throat> if I believe that we're trying, that we're going to timestamp, um, this currency transition, um, I know how the movie ends. Um, inflation starts to soar and everyone starts blaming the, the, um, the capitalists and, and turning to an authoritarian leader like 19, 1921 to 1924, um, Germany. Um, and we want them to, to turn in, in them. That, then all of a sudden the system, the political system shifts into a world where I don't want my daughters growing up in. Um, so what I decided to do is try to change the ending of the movie. We're going to have them. We want them to try to blame the central planners and return to capitalism because this is not a capitalist society anymore. If you're enjoying this interview with Chris Galicio and I, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and giving us a thumbs up to let the algos know you want to see more content like this. And if you want to learn more about systemic wealth protection, please do visit us at www.silverbullion.com.sg. Uh, one thing, though, kind of caught my attention, one of many, where you said we, we've kind of moved from an investment system to a, a financing system. <clears throat> and you right. noted that this probably came about in 2008. So right. from that time period, 2008 until today, has the economy ever truly recovered? Definitely not. So uh, during my white paper um, before COVID, I was showing that the um, productivity growth in the U.S. Um, was the slowest recovery in history. Despite all the money printing, I think productivity growth over that period was 1.8% per year, right? Um, then COVID hit, right, which took productivity down. If you look at productivity recently, I think the last quarter productivity growth was negative 7.5% as we misallocate resources. So this isn't capitalist society anymore. Mark. So by the way, if this system ends, our economy is going to boom, right? Because right now we're just misallocating capital, we're pouring money into AMC and, and GameStop and Dogecoin and all these craziness. If, if we start allocating our capital again uh, correctly, you're going to see Everyone, this is why um, my white paper that I wrote on the focus cap, focused hyphen capital dot com was the three hundred and forty trillion dollar problem referring to the dollar system. By the way, the dollar system includes the yen, um, the euro, and the pound and the Swiss. Right, so you take all those those countries together. But if this dollar system ends, you're going to see the world boom, right? Because all of a sudden people are going to start allocating capital. Right now, we're, what's happening is the um, the entire system is. All the money is being sucked into developed market stocks, or it had been up till now, right? Um, so all the money was going into developed market stocks, which was draining um, emerging markets, right? So they can't get capital. I see all these private equity projects, um, which I've never seen better private deals than I see today. And so I'm investing in a bunch of private deals. I mean, that 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 I can't believe I want to. So you have a choice of buying a Snapchat or, a, or Square, all these companies that burn cash like crazy. Or you can do these private deals, which make you 10x. So I've been doing private deals um, because because it's it's because uh, all the money because of the system we have a bunch of gazelles walking around not thinking, right? They they never run. They they're just walking in the middle of the street. If all of a sudden there were there was some risk out there, they'd start to think about what they're putting their money into, right? Because they because in, in in the in the in the in the uh, animal world they'd get eaten. Um, GameStop would go to zero. You know, Chris, we may be immune to the craziness of the financial markets these days as stock prices continue to have crazy valuations, negative yielding sovereign bonds, an explosion of crypto coins coming on the scene. And then we have NFTs. Do you think we are witnessing the craziest run up in financial market history or in mankind's history? I do. Uh, because um, because when when stocks, when, when interest rates go negative, all assets are worth infinite. Um, they're controlling the most important statistic in finance, um, which is the 10-year bond yield. 
Um, recently, you saw, like, a, like I said earlier, um, um, bon, um, German bonds trade at 1.7%, but PPI is 33%. That doesn't make sense, right? So, um, so, so when you control the most important statistic in finance, you break the entire system. Um, and that's what you're seeing. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, it's the craziest time in financial markets history because we're in a sovereign debt crisis, right? So, um, the very closing quote in our movie is, um, from Jack Bogle. Um, and his, his quote from 2000, it was May of 2017, right before he died was, and he's the founder of passive. If passive ever gets bigger than active, you'll have chaos and catastrophe. Your markets will fail. Not in the sense that markets go down, but in the sense that they start to misallocate resources. And that's what you're seeing in today's market. So I think we have the most, our money game has the most important topic in the world today. We're removing risk changes the ecosystem. Removing the risk of, of, um, from stocks creates inflation. And we all know at the end of the day that money printing doesn't create wealth. And yet you have all these PhDs across the world telling you that, um, no, the Fed can control it. And it, it, we all know it doesn't work. Um, so I don't know. So, so, and by the way, they're also telling you that markets are efficient. In our book, I'm sorry, in our movie, um, the professor is going to lift the book, The Efficient Market Thesis, and he's going to laugh. And he's going to say smart people thought the world was flat once too. And then he's going to say, if, um, if um, he's going to say um, the most um, underused books in finance are history books. And then he's going to talk about the great German inflation from 1921 to 1924, in which caused the rise of Hitler. Um, and he's going to circle a word on the board, inflation. And so that's where we are. So in Money Game, we're trying to um, change the ending. Um, we know how the movie typically ends. It ends with um, everyone blaming the capitalists and uh, turning to an authoritarian leader like Hitler. We want to change the ending. We want to, we want them to blame the central planners and return to capitalism. And that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's hope we can all do something about this. All we need to do is think. Correct. <laughs> or else we just need to, to well, think. That's and so, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to show, we're trying to um, get the, um, the lions back. We're trying to return the lions. We're trying to get, our movie's in an attempt to bring lions back and stop buying ETFs, stop listening to BlackRock, because BlackRock um, is, is pitching things like, um, like ESG. ESG is, a, is, is someone's political agenda. It's not, they're not buying, e they're using bud, buzzwords like ESG, or, um, or technology to get people, hey, isn't technology great? But no one's ever discussing what they're paying for those things, right? So, they, so, so it's, it's all, it's, which gets back to it's a financing system. When, and, and so when people um, are buying ETFs, they're just buying someone's political agenda, right? They're not telling you buy, ET, that buy ESG because it's really cheap. Um, you can buy it at one times free cash flow. Um, they're saying just buy ESG and forget about it. Here's a buzzword. We'll give you a buzzword. Go buy ESG. And everyone said, oh, yeah, we're going to save the planet. Great. Um, in the meantime, we also need energy um, and there's energy shortage. So, right. Right. You know, Chris, some people think it's difficult for the world to not use the U.S. dollar and that the current dollar system will survive simply because there are no better options out there. And there are others who believe the dollar is dying or at least on the way out. What are your thoughts on this? Um, I, I love that. I think that's one of the dumbest arguments I've heard. That's the cleanest of the cleanest shirts. If you go back to, so on my website, I have um, a section called the Plaza Accord. Um, during the Plaza Accord from 1985, um, it basically shows that they had a coordinated devaluation of the U.S. dollar. So um, the argument that the U.S. dollar is the best of all the, of the currencies, yeah, because they're all part of the same system. They're coordinated. Right. So, um, so which gets back to my point, if you look at the, uh, the Plaza Accord, it says that a coordinated devaluation of the U.S. dollar. Right. Because because with all of its trading partners within the DXY, you have um, the dollar, um, the pound, um, the yen and the euro. Is it the best of those? Yes, because it's the kingpin of those. But they're all the same system. Um, so I think that's a garbage argument. And I, I think the canary in the coal mine, and I think we're watching it in every day, um, is Japan. Japan um, has, is buying unlimited JGBs because they're trying to pin interest rates at 0.25% because Japan has the most debt in the world. I think their debt to GDP is 260%. So if interest rates go for, to 5%, it blows up the entire system. 
And so what they're doing is they're pinning interest rates at 0.25% and they're buying unlimited JGBs. I think I read something today that 40% of their bonds are now JGBs. But here's what's at. So the canary in the coal mine is Japan and you're seeing them struggle because foreigners are no longer buying their bonds. Um, and so the liquidity is drying up. And that's part of what happened over the last couple of days um, with the stock market crashing um, because um, <clears throat> Um, because, um, because the, 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 the bond buyers are, are drying up. They've gone from, uh, I think it was 4 billion. Um, um, the liquidity was $4 billion, $4 billion, um, dollars a day. And now it's 3 billion. So liquidity is all drying up. Um, you're seeing the, um, the yen, um, devalue, right? I think it's 135 now. Um, the more the yen v revalue devalues, it gets the whole system to, um, to, um, unravel. Right, because um, one the two, the three biggest buyers of U.S. bonds are Japan, China, and the U.S. Right, so now you have Japan, which is going from a net buyer to a net seller, and now we're relying on China, um, which is not necessarily an ally of ours, um, to buy our bonds. Who who's left to buy it? So I do think our movie is going to timestamp a currency transition, and I think our timing couldn't be any better. And you're seeing it all happen in real time. I believe at some point um, the Fed's going to realize they can't continue to tight policy because if interest rates go too high, they can't they themselves can't afford it. Right. And with, with debt to GDP of one hundred and twenty five percent, the Fed can't afford interest rates at five percent. <clears throat> so um, at some point they're going to have to reverse course. And I believe when they reverse course, um, it's going to end the dollar system. Um, so all of a sudden you're going to see inflation because you're going to be you're going to be um, printing money into the inflation. And when they do that, it ends the system. All of a sudden, we're going we're gonna to have stagflation. And so I think our timing could be absolutely perfect. You know, Chris, when, when the dollar does, uh, some people use the word fall, when the dollar falls, and, you know, with all the dollars that are circulating around the world, around the globe, when they all come back, they all come back to the U.S., what are we going to see? Yeah, so um, the biggest export in the U.S. over the last 40 years has been dollars. Um, We've been balancing our current account deficits um, with, with dollar exports. So if dollars start to return, we're going to have a current account deficit and a capital account deficit. Um, the governor that controls um, balance, imbalances in economies is currency. So what we've, been, we've been balancing that for, for years. We've been balancing our current account deficit for, and our trade deficits for years with money flows externally. If all those, I think it's $9 trillion globally, return to the U.S., you're going to have too many dollars chasing too few goods, and that's the end of the system. The other thing that's really important, I think the other thing that's really important, look at our economy. Look at the U.S. economy. 70% of the economy is consumption. When have you, another, I think it's 17, 18% of the economy is government. When have you seen an economy grow through consumption? That doesn't make sense. That's an imbalance. And by the way, our consumption is the highest ever. Why? Because the dollar is strong. The dollar is strong versus commodities. Um, it, and it, again, if that if that whole thing shifts, and by the way, we're seeing it happen in real time today. Um, as the Fed printed six trillion dollars, the um, the commodity table, which is led by Russia, um, rejected it, and they said we're not going to accept this anymore. I'm not going to accept your printed money from my my dollars. Um, by the way, I think we've also ended um, the um, the petrodollar system. Right. And you can see that from an, my belief is the petrodollar system ended, um, which caused the repo market spike in 2019. All of a sudden, the U.S. lost financing. And the way, way you can look at that, just look at where Saudi Arabia is now buying their fighter planes from. It's from Russia, not from the U.S. Right. And so if the, if, 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 if the, the petrodollar system really did end, um, then the dollar really is just a fiat currency. Um, and you're seeing it across the board. I mean, so, again, it's not just the dollar. I think the dollar is just the kingpin of the system. It's hard to imagine where, where the dollar is, is not anymore, the, the petrol dollar and, and resources have shifted. And and I'm just curious, do, do you think people in, in, in the U.S. or even in the West fully understand what is happening right now with this, this reallocation of, of resources in the world? I think you have um, a bunch of um, gazelles in the U.S. Um, that, have, that, that refuse to take risk outside of the market because they've been protected. So they're just walking through the street not expecting what's going to happen. Um, and, but you're seeing it 
Um, I mean, it's caused such disparities in, um, in valuations that valuations just don't make sense anymore. Uh, I've never seen, by the way, in a time when the stock market is the biggest bubble it's ever been, commodity stocks have never been cheaper. Not only are commodity prices cheap, but the commodity stocks built on those are also cheap. I mean, when, do, when are you ever going to be able to find a, a company at one times earnings? And how does that make sense? And I can, I can point them out to you. So it's, I mean, I buy stocks between one and six times free cash flow during, during a sovereign debt crisis when inflation in Germany is 33%. How can that be? But that's what you're seeing. You know, Chris, let's say all of these things, they, they come to fruition. We have all of these changes going on. What is the U.S. going to look like after this? So that's a harder question. The, what I will tell you is the globe is going to boom. Like we're going to have the biggest expansion in the world ever. Um, the U.S. is going to have some serious growing pains. Um, as you know, before COVID, 21% of um, U.S. companies were zombie corps. And they're zombie corps in plain sight. Like um, G- General Electric for a while was a, was a zombie, zombie, zombie corp. Boeing is a zombie corp. Like, um, so, there's, there's, so if 21% of the company is no longer being financed, um, then they go to zero. Right? We all know the value of a company that loses money every year. It's zero. Right? So without, without their financing system, the U.S. has to change. Um, so the so U.S. is going to go through some, fr- some growing pains, but eventually I think everything um, is, ends up better. I think the system globally ends up better. Chris, can the U.S. recover? I mean, is, is gold one of those things that could help it recover? A hundred percent. That's a really good thought. So um, <clears throat> U.S. does have a lot of gold, and you'd probably know better than me. I'm not necessarily a gold export expert, but um, I think it's like eight eight thousand tons or something like that. I, I'm not I'm not the I'm not the expert in this, but if you reprice gold to twenty thousand, say, um, all of a sudden the U.S. has a lot of money. And by the way, um, their their debt to GDP isn't as high as it used to be, right? So if you just reprice gold to twenty thousand, you'll see a um, the um, the U.S. does not have nearly the amount of debt that they had. They can actually um, they can actually then um, safely raise interest rates because they do have gold on its balance sheet. So um, so I think that a reset like that is definitely possible. Again, I'm not the expert, um, but um, but I think something like that makes sense. Chris, can you share with us any updates on your movie, The Money Game? And when will it be out? There's a movie going to be released about Whitney Houston. It's called I Want to Dance with Somebody. Um, We have three of the actors um, from um, from um, from that movie. Uh, we think that's going to be a sixty to one hundred million dollar movie, and it's going to be released in December. Um, we we are we're, we're, we've already shot Money Game. Now we're adding music. We've, we're pretty much done with our editing. Um, so we think we want to release it probably February or March, um, right after the Whitney Houston movie, because we have three of their actors, and they are fantastic actors. And so we've already shot it. We know what it looks like. Um, our film crew um, shot Coda, um, which just won Best Film at the Oscars. So we think we have a really great product um, at a really great time. And um, if our actors are, um, are have bigger names by the time this is released, then we have a, a really big movie. Okay. Are uh, two of those actors, perhaps Jerome Powell, Janet Yellen? <laughs> we have Daniel Washington, Chris Sidbury. Daniel Washington's our main, our lead. Um, he's a black widowed father of two struggling to make ends meet. Um, so he's a medical technician during COVID. So he, should, he, he represents the average American. Um, we have um, we have Terrence McFadden Jr., who I think is just a superstar. I mean, they're both superstars. But uh, I think Terrence, um, he his scenes are just epic. He's he's the CEO of the next big thing. Um, the name of I'm not gonna I'm not, I won't tell you the name of the the next big thing, but it's it's funny, um, it's interesting, and I think it's going to capture a lot of people's attention. All right. Chris Galizio, executive producer of The Money Game. Before we wrap up, can you let our viewers know how they can follow you or perhaps even contact you? So you can go on IMDb. If you're interested in, um, in looking at Money Game, just type in Money Game. We have a picture of Ben Franklin with a mask because the whole thing is set in, in, um, in COVID. Um, you can also go on my website, which is focused-capital.com, where you can find my, my white paper, The $340 Trillion Problem, or all my concepts that that I that I've tried to tried to lay out in terms of the system is no longer people anymore. Everyone talks about how people are buying GameStop. It's not. It's machines. The whole system is broken, and it's machines now. And so, um, and by the way, it's not because they're um, they're better allocators of capital. It's because of moral hazard. 
right? Because machines don't have morals. Humans have morals and they would never have invested in these. So as the Fed controlled rates, um, they pushed the value of everything up and humans all um, got eaten is what happened. So um, so, you, so you can look on, on either, um, <clears throat> you can either go on my website or you can go on IMDb to find more information. Chris Galizo, we thank you for your time. We look forward to the movie and I hope we can do this again soon. Thanks, Patrick. Ha- thanks for having me. It was great. That was Chris Galizio sharing his views on the economy and the movie, The Money Game. For more info on Chris, please visit IMDB and look up The Money Game. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share to let the algos know you want to see more of our content. Audio-only versions of this interview can be found on iTunes and Spotify.